very good morning to all. The chief guests are on their way, so the inaugural ceremony will begin shortly. Before the commencement of the program, I would like to announce few instructions which are to be followed strictly. I request the audience to please be seated and maintain silence throughout the program. Please do not bring any eatables inside the hall. I request you all to please rise when the dignitaries arrive in the auditorium and remain seated throughout the program. I request you all to kindly remain seated until the dignitaries leave the hall. Thank you. Vanakkam, anayvarikkum or anbana vendukol. Daiva seidu ungalaga mobile phone switch off seyavum alladhu silent mode il vaikkavum. நிகழ்ச்சி முடியும் வரை அமைதி காக்கவும் சிறப்பு விருந்தினர்கள் அரங்கிற்குள் நுழையும் பொழுது அனைவரும் மரியாதை நிமித்தம் எழுந்து நிற்கவும் இந்த அரங்கிற்குள் உணவு பொருட்களுக்கு அனுமதி இல்லை அனைத்து விதிமுறை விதிமுறைகளையும் பின்பற்றுமாறு தாழ்மையுடன் கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறோம் நன்றி
मूर्ति Sound is coming. Video is not coming. Hey, audio or the video matu play or matu. Sound is coming. Sound is coming. ஆடியோ அவுட் புட் வந்து கேப்சர் ஆடியோ ஒன்லியில் இருக்குமா ஓகே 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 மூவர்
very good morning to all the chief guests are, have arrived the hall i kindly request the audience to maintain silence and remain seated As the chill in the air fades and the warmth of the sun becomes stronger, you know that you need not hold on to the past any longer. The gray clouds are lighter, the sky is a clearer blue, and now you can see it's time to start something brand new. With this positive note, we cordially welcome you all to this glorious event of the 2022 to 2023 batches of Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Chetinath School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chetinath School of Physiotherapy, and Chetinat School of Occupational Therapy. Awaken your spirit to adventure, hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk, feel the new rhythm in care. Looking back at my first day, it was around eight in the morning. It struck me, I'm not at home anymore. I started sweating even after my morning bath. 
How difficult can it be? Will I be making friends? Am I competent enough? Or should I just turn back, book my tickets and run? Well, I'm sure you can all relate to how I felt that day. May I take a moment to remind you all to catch your breath and calm down. We've always been told to take the first step and then the rest of it falls into place. For some, it's a myth. For some, it's a try. For those who blindly take the step are the pioneers of success. I take immense pleasure in welcoming the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Chetinad Academy of Research and Education, Professor Dr. Shanta Ravi Shankar, onto the dais. I welcome our esteemed advisor and former Vice Chancellor of Chetinad Academy of Research and Education, Professor Dr. T. Balasubramanian, onto the dais. It's our privilege and honor to welcome our chief guest of the day, Mr. Malinath Ji, General Manager, Strategy and Business Development, Serum Institute of India, to come on to the dais. We are glad to invite Professor Dr. Kumar Ebenezer, Principal, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Dr. K. Lakshmi, Dean, Chetinath School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. P. Sendhil, Dean, Chetinath School of Physiotherapy, and Dr. Pankaj Kumar, Dean, Chetinath School of Occupational Therapy, to please come on to the dais and grace the occasion with their presence. Kachradanal aya payan enkul, valarivan, natchal, torar enin. Wisdom derived from learning goes meaningless for those who fail to worship the good feet of God who is possessed of pure knowledge. On this note, we request you all to raise for the Tamil Thai Vartha. Nirarum kadaludutta nilamadatai kedilodukum Sīrāruṁ adhana menatthikal varadak kandamidhi Dekkanamum adichiranda thāvidanal thirinādum Takkasiru mirai nudalum karitanarum thilagamumi Atthilag vāsarai vol anikulagum imbamure Yathisayum pukal manak kairundha perum thamidanangi Thamidanangi Un sīrīđamai thirambi yandhi sayal marandhi Vaattu dhumi Vaattu dhumi Vaattu dhumi Every auspicious occasion begins with lighting of the lamp to seek the blessings of the goddess of knowledge. I now request the dignitaries to light the lamp and also request two student volunteers from the freshers batch to join the dignitaries onto the dais.
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. May we now request Dr. Lakshmi, Dean, Chetanath School of Pharmaceutical Sciences to deliver the welcome address. Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Mr. Malinath Gugare, Respected Vice Chancellor Kerr, Professor Dr. Shanta Ravishankar, Esteemed Advisor and former Vice Chancellor Kerr, Professor Dr. T. Balasubramanian, Dynamic Registrar Srimati S. Jayendra Saraswati, Deans, Heads of various departments, Faculty members, Technical and Administrative staff, Students, Dear freshers and their parents, a very good morning to all of you assembled here. I take this opportunity to heartily welcome you all to this memorable event, the inauguration ceremony of the 2022 batch of Allied Health Sciences, Pharmacy, Physiotherapy and Occupation Therapy programs. First of all, I congratulate you for having chosen the best college for pursuing your dreams. We wholeheartedly welcome you to the Chetinad family. Chetinad Academy of Research and Education is the brainchild of Dr. Sri M. A. M. R. Mutaya, Chairman, Chetinad Group, who being an educational philanthropist, envisioned the dream of establishing a world-class education institution that would mold and guide future generations of enlightened minds. Chetinad Academy of Research and Education was conferred with the status of deemed to be university in the year 2008. CARE has been accredited with grade A++ by NAC and accorded CIRO status by DSIR. In conformity with the motto of the university, capability, character, and commitment, the academic programs offered are professional, job-oriented, and innovative. Chetinad Academy offers 74 academic programs in faculty of medicine, nursing, allied health sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, physiotherapy, law, and architecture. Currently, this academy has about 2,500 plus students pursuing their UG, PG, super speciality, and PhD programs. I enthusiastically welcome all the bright young minds to our institute. Chetinad is where you connect with other motivated students, knowledgeable and steadfast faculty members, and many more inspiring minds. We endeavor to offer equal and advanced opportunities to students in academics and research through various collaborations and internships. This gives students an opportunity to improvise their knowledge and life skills, thereby bringing forth the industry-ready professionals. Our institute focuses on creating a holistic learning environment. This is a time for reinventing education not the essence of what we do, but how we do it, how we teach, how we organize ourselves, and how we support student success. Our job is to create the conditions under which students will be inspired to succeed. I feel privileged and honored to welcome our chief guest of today's inaugural function, Mr. Malinath Gugare, General Manager, Strategy and Business Development, Serum Institute of India, a person known for his contribution to business development, team management, and its compliances. We welcome you, sir. We also thank you for accepting our invitation to address our students who are about to start another new chapter in their lives. Our most honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Shanta Ravishankar, a dynamic personality of our academy. I welcome you, madam. <laughs> our most honorable advisor, Professor Dr. Balasubramanian, the backbone of the academy. I welcome you, sir. 
I would like to welcome the eminent and dynamic lady who is responsible for transforming the dream to reality, our beloved registrar, Mrs. Jayendra Saraswati, madam. Welcome, madam. I extend my sincere welcome to Dr. Kumar Ebenezer, Principal, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Dr. P. Sendhil, Dean, School of Physiotherapy, Dr. Pankaj Kumar, Dean, School of Occupation Therapy, to this occasion. I would like to welcome all the parents with a request to extend their love and support to the future prospects of the Institute. I would like to welcome the heads, faculty, and students of other departments who are part and parcel of this institute in my modest words. I hope and request your cooperation throughout this program for the grand success. I would advise the freshers to become extraordinary in every respect. Remember, every noble man was once a beginner. Student life is the preparatory stage for entering into the arena of the real life. Love what you do and do what you love and achieve excellence. We enlighten and empower you to reach your goals. We will remain as navigators and guide you in all respects. Let us give an assurance today to maintain an amiable and earnest relationship with each other and make this institution proud with our discipline, excellence, and hard work. I'm certain that you would find the upcoming years the most inspiring years of your life. I hereby wish you all a very happy and academically fulfilling journey ahead and an outstanding stay in the college. I welcome you all once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now is the time for the felicitation of the chief guest. I request our beloved advisor, Professor Dr. T. Balasubramanian, to honor the chief guest with a memento. Thank you, sir. To deliver the special address, once again, may we request our advisor of care, Professor Dr. T. Balasubramanian, to say a few words. In the Palai Karel to lay on the Saravendum, Padakimendum and Rondula, Pudia Manor Hale, esteemed Chief Guest of this day, Steve Molinath from Serum Institute, most respected Vice Chancellor of our university, Madam Ravishankar, and our esteemed heads of different schools who are occupying the dais from various schools, most respected other heads, faculty members, students, non-teaching staff, good morning every one of you. It is a glorif glorified day, no doubt, as in the welcome address, Madam Lashmi said, it is a very glorified day because we all assembled here for inaugurating the new batches in the various schools, five different schools. The parents as well as the freshers, they would be very happy as well our distinguished chief guests because this campus, the Chetnad Academy of Research and Education, the deemed to be university, is an young university. 
less than 15 years old university. But the accomplishments that is being achieved in the last 15 years is phenomenal, I would say. The credit goes to our managing trustee, the driving force behind all the activities, Sri MAMR, Dr. Mutaya, and the Chancellor, Sri Madam Geeta, plus the Associated Administration, our Registrar, our Vice Chancellor, our Registrar, and all the faculty members who toiled to reach a fairly a high status which is recognized in the country. In fact, we started with, for the benefit of uh, our chief guest as well as the parents, this university has started with only with the medical, nursing, and allied health sciences. And allied health sciences start a little later. But the blend of the activities, the academic activities by these three major schools, including nursing schools, in terms of education, research, and extension activity, they could be able to attract and develop this university into various aspects. That is how in the last three to four years, we diversified into bringing in different schools. The first and foremost school out of that is the School of Pharmacy, and which is very essential for the university system like this because the pharmacy play a major role both in education as well as in research and extension. <laughs> Fine, that is a new addition, but imagine the contributions that are made by the allied health sciences. Again, it is very phenomenal, I would say. See, the research activities in this campus have started because of the allied health sciences. They could be able to interact with the clinicians and they made wonderful publications as well as research projects that attracted many students for joining PhD in this campus. And no doubt, we started the School of Law, School of Architecture, School of Physiotherapy, and this year, the occupational therapy. So friends, imagine the university which is less than 15 years old could be able to diversify maintaining the rank rather. As our uh, pharmacy head, Madam said about the ranking, this, is, this university has achieved the top class ranking. We are one among top 100 universities in the country. We are one among 39 medical colleges in the country. And we are A++ by way of NAC. And we have a lot of international accreditation also. In fact, the parents and the freshers who joined, definitely they would have seen the accomplishments that is being achieved by this university and thereby very easily we could be able to fill our requirement because we have only limited strength in each and every program. The idea is that the allied health sciences, they have a close coordination with the clinicians and non-clinicians and ultimately the research that is happening in this campus as well as the support that is being extended to the clinicians to accomplish the high standard of treatment that is being made possible because of the graduates from Malayal Health Sciences. They give excellent support, rather. And equally, we have the pharmacy as well as physiotherapy. The physiotherapy, when I, I mention about pharmacy, because it's a young department, equally the same physiotherapy also. But in both the schools, the physiotherapy as well as pharmacy, and uh, the AHS, they all combine together and they make the campus very vibrant all the time. There will be a lot of academic program that is happening in this campus. And they could be able to attract 
മോർ ദാൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഇൻഡസ്ട്രിയൽ ഇൻവോൾവ്മെൻറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് എക്സ്ചേഞ്ച് ദ എമോ യു വിത്ത് മോർ ദാൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഇൻഡസ്ട്രീസ് ദ ഐഡിയ ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് അവർ മാനേജിങ് ട്രസ്റ്റ് ദ വിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ദി ദിസ് ക്യാമ്പസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ദ ഷുഡ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് മോർ ഓഫ് ആൻ്റർപ്രണേഴ്സ് റാദർ ദാൻ പീപ്പിൾ സീക്കിംഗ് എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഹീ ഈസ് എ സക്സസ്ഫുൾ ആൻ്റർപ്രണർ and the same concept he would like to inbuilt in the system and that is why we chose only the professional courses which is giving lot of opportunity for entrepreneurship and the skill development in this campus is very high so considering this for the inauguration we have been wondering to whom to invite we are very fortunate fortunate today to have with us the chief guest of this day sri mallinath from seram institute everyone in the whole world knows about the role played by the seram institute no doubt we could be able to successfully overcome the pandemic in the last 3 years because of the support rendered by seram institute by providing the vaccines the covid shield and covax vaccine for the benefit of the human kind in our country see the serum institute is the one institute which is giving not only this uh, covid vaccines they make array of vaccines and they supply 65% of the world requirement imagine the business head is very much with us unless otherwise he played a major role it is definitely difficult for a developing country to reach a status of 65% of the world requirement to supply and the credit goes to our chief guest of course he won't accept it because it is the team effort and they have excellent scientists as well as entrepreneurs ultimately they could be able to reach and they give the vaccines which are simple at the same time cost effective cost wise it is fairly cheaper see very easily we can compare the cost of the vaccines by pfizer and moderna with covishield i don't want to elaborate because it's a business secret probably our chief guest will elaborate you and motivate you so that the ultimate aim of our managing trustee to bring to inculcate the more entrepreneurship in this campus that is the ultimate aim of our managing trustee that will happen that is the reason we have been longing for last two years to invite the to invite and to have collaboration with serum institute sir mr malnath sir our humble request is that please exchange an mou and constantly we should also be involved with serum institute chetinad and serum institute should join together to make newer and newer vaccines and the role played by chetinad will be very unique for you as that of serum institute and no doubt the our vice chancellor is playing a key role in organizing all the academic programs in this campus and she is the guiding spirit in the campus and through her the whole administration through our registrar and others they totally involve and make this campus academically very brilliant and we are sure in the years to come definitely the we will be one among top 100 universities in the world that is our ultimate aim our managing trust aims that it should be a world class university we can make it because we have such a dedicated faculties and dedicated professors and clinicians available with us so no doubt the youngsters who are chosen this university definitely will get the benefit from every one of us again one more thing i would like to always i used to say i am so proud to say that this is the campus it's a clean campus green campus smart campus and the maintenance is being made by the participation of every one of us and very unique campus where we use even 
the solar energy for the major component in our campus. Almost we use all kinds of non-conventional energy sources for utilization that is being happening in this campus. I'm sure the address to be given by our chief guest will motivate all the young minds and the newers who are going to, who has joined in our campus will get the greatest benefit out of our chief guest address. And I have great pleasure in felicitating all the heads of the different schools, including the newer schools of occupational therapy, as well our vice chancellor, registrar, the vice principal, as well as the active person, administratively active person, along with the vice principal is our AIR, Dr. Mengana Kumar. So there is blend of activities, including our director academic side. So we have very active people. Through them, we could be able to accomplish so many activities. I felicitate every one of them. Besides, I sincerely and gratefully thank the managing trustee as well as chancellor for giving this wonderful opportunity to be with them and to promote the academic excellence in the future. With this, I take this opportunity to thank every one of you and one and all. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, for your insightful perspective. We now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Care, Professor Dr. Shanta Ravi Shankar, to deliver the presidential address. A very good morning to one and all. Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Malinath, G, G, M, G, uh, General Manager Strategy and Business Development, Serum Institute of India, Mumbai. Respected Dr. Bala Subramaniam, our advisor, Chetinad Academy of Research and Education, heads of the various schools, pharmaceutical science, School of Physiotherapy, Chetinad, our uh, Allied Health Sciences principal, and the head of the Occupational Therapy School. Dear professors, registrar, uh, Jayendra Saraswati, our academic officer, Dr. Sridhar, vice principal, Dr. Mainana Kumar, senior professors, faculty members, the staff, and respected parents who are here with their wards, and my beloved students. It gives me great pleasure to be here in front of you as the vice chancellor of this prestigious academic institute. This is one of the higher education institutes which has been developing rapidly over the short period of time, which I have been seeing through my tenure here from only last November. I have been here only for the past 10 months, and in this short period, I myself have seen a rapid development in this institute. Now, all this is because of the great visionary, our managing director, Dr. M. A. M. R. Mutaya, and our chancellor, Mrs. Geeta Mutaya. Both of them are great visionaries, and they, their main aim is to give the best to our students and to take this university to greater heights, as the others said, to a, to a great level in the globally, not only internationally, globally they want to be in the higher rank. So this is our vision and our goal, and we, with the best of faculty, who are highly qualified, highly committed, will definitely fulfill the dreams of our managing trustee and our chancellor. And I am very sure about that because I see them working every day. I know the amount of hard work put in by our registrar, our vice principal, our administrative team, our infrastructure, our staff. Everybody is committed. Each one is committed. So with this, I would uh, give a, uh, I mean, I would like to congratulate I heartily congratulate each one of these students who have joined this institute and the parents who have chosen this best academic institution for their children. 
I assure you, my dear parents, that your children will come out with a holistic development. Not only academically will they do well, but they will be trained and disciplined, and always they will be maintaining a decorum wherever they go, and they will hold the flag high wherever they go as students from Chetinad Academy of Research and Education. Our students have been uh, taught about the moral values and everything. It is not only the academics that we are training them. We are giving them a whole development, both culturally, and they know what is the work culture that they have to maintain wherever they go. So our faculties are real role models to these students, and they will develop completely as a good individual when they go out from us, and they will stand great opportunities in bigger hospitals, bigger institutions. They will get a lot of job opportunities. We do have campus selection, and the students are also taken up for outreach programs. They are allowed to interact with the experts in their fields, both in law, in faculty of allied health sciences, and there are regular teaching programs, academic sessions, like seminars, symposiums, which are being conducted. And our students are given great opportunities to exhibit their skills and knowledge. And they are also being imparted with the best skills here in the highest technology in the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences Department. I do attend a lot of programs that are conducted by the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. And they are always bent upon doing great research. And research is very important for every one of us. And I would tell our youngsters today to kindly be research oriented, present a lot of papers, publish a lot of papers, and that is the way to go ahead. Always you have to fix your goal as our uh, Dr. APJ, Abdul Kalam. He was a great teacher, he was a scientist, and he was a people's president. What I would like to quote him, if four things are followed, having a great aim, acquiring knowledge, hard work, and perseverance, then anything can be achieved. Yes, all of you should have a aim. We should move towards a goal. Only then we have some commitment, we have some focus. Never give up at any stage. Whatever your goal is, you try to work very hard. Of course, there is a beginning for everybody. As our head of pharmaceutical sciences said, any noble person, there is a beginning. So there is a beginning for all of us. And only when you go through that hardship will you be rewarded. And definitely, the Almighty will have something good in store for you for whatever the hardship that you are going through. So, so my dear students, be very focused, fix your aim, have a goal, keep moving towards that goal, and definitely our faculty and our institute will support you in all your endeavors, and you will definitely be able to achieve whatever you want. And acquire knowledge from wherever possible. It can be from your faculty, it can be from your students, it can be from the learned people that you are coming across. And that is how we learn. We can learn from even somebody who is very junior to us. I have been in the teaching profession yeah, as an academician for more than three decades. And of course, I used to enjoy teaching our students at Madras Medical College. And every class has taught me a lesson. Every day is learning. Our life is a journey. And we learn every day. Day to day, you learn something. So make it a point that you have to show some improvement every day. So that is very important for our youngsters. And hard work is the only way out. So never hesitate to go through the drill. Take the hardship, go through the hard work, and that will definitely reward you. And perseverance, my dear students, is very, very important. Never give up. Always say, doesn't matter. This time I have not got it. Next time I will get. So we can fail. Not that we should never fail. Failure is always a stepping stone to success. So all of you, Please be perseverant in whatever you do, and definitely you will succeed. I congratulate once again all of you for having chosen this institute, and I wish you all the very best, and I hope you enjoy your course here and get go out in flying colors. I congratulate you once again. Thank you one and all for this great opportunity. Every day indeed is the learning. Thank you, ma'am, for inspiring us with your words. We now request Dr. Antara Banerjee, Associate Professor, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, to introduce our chief guest to the audience. Good morning to one and all present here. 
I feel honored and privileged to have been given the opportunity to introduce today's chief guest on this very special occasion. On behalf of Chetinad Academy of Research and Education, I welcome our chief guest, Mr. Malinath Gugare, General Manager, Strategy and Business Development, Serum Institute of India, one of the world's largest manufacturer of vaccines. Malinath, sir, is working towards connecting young minds to strive for success and achievement. We are grateful to him for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest of today's event. Once again, we welcome you, sir. Mr. Malinath has graduated in science with specialization in microbiology, and then he pursued business development management studies from a renowned institute, XLRI Jamshedpur. Rising through the ranks, he worked for a British pharma major MNC, GlaxoSmithKline, for 22 years at various positions and functions. After a short stint with Vocard Pharmaceuticals as business unit head, he thereafter joined Serum Institute of India. Mr. Malinath is a competent professional with 30 years of experience that reflects pioneering expertise, year-on-year -year success in the company's business development, client relationship management, revenue generation, team management, and corporate compliances. He is known for his wonderful administration and high achievements in his capacity as general manager in Serum Institute of India. Apart from this, he is an enterprising leader with capability of mentoring people to attain their individual goals without losing focus on the organization's business objectives. Sir is a certified professional for people's development, job coaching, leading deliveries, skill and competency development. His highly fulfilling career has been studied with several global and national awards. We are so honored to have you as the chief guest for the day, sir. I am certain that each one of us assuredly wants to hear from you, sir. With this, I now request Mr. Malinath Gugare, sir, to come to the podium and enlighten us with his knowledge and wisdom and to share his rich experience and experience with us. Good morning. I'm absolutely nostalgic today. The moment I entered this premise, I felt something different in the air. When I entered this hall, I found something different in the walls. I wondered what, what is the difference. I was wondering. Suddenly, I realized that I am in something called as a Vidya Mandir. You know Vidya Mandir? <laughs> temple of town, uh, temple of knowledge, temple of education, right? Great. Nostalgic because I entered after 30 years. It took me down the memory lanes. Somewhere back in 30 years ago, I was a part of, I was a student like you in the college. So my palpitations went up for a moment. And initially I thought it is you know, a great honor for me, a great privilege uh, being felicitated by such a honorable dignitary sitting here. I was flabbergasted, flattened. But then I realized, no, I'm a little bit you know, becoming emotional. Yes. Reason being, I'm a too small man. When I come from in front of a teacher or a guru, when I say this is a Vidya Mandir, these are all the teachers, the gurus, 
I should not be felicitated. But that's their greatness. Their simplicity lies in their greatness. So I take this opportunity to thank these dignitaries, the honorable uh, advisor, the vice chancellor, the deans. Thanking alone will not be adequate enough. I should, I think I should go down, go there, bow down and offer my respect and gratitude. Do you all agree? Yes, 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 students. Well, Professor, uh, I think Dean, uh, the Dean has, uh, the advisor has spoken about uh, Serum Institute of India, right? He has left nothing to speak now for me. <laughs> I've been introduced uh, with all whatever achievements I have. So I think half of my job is done. Anyway. I take this uh, opportunity to uh, congratulate all the parents sitting here. May I request the parents to raise their hands, please, because I can't. Uh, parents? My hearty congratulations to the parents. You have raised your young children very well, exceptionally well. And now you are helping them by giving an array of opportunities to learn, to grow, to discover themselves, and to see what best difference they can make in this world. Let me take a pause here. Let me ask the students. Students, do you believe that your parents need a thundering noise of applause? Good, I at least got to listen a little higher decibel in terms of claps noise, good. I take this opportunity to congratulate the students. I'm sure they have put in a lot of hard efforts to reach this academy. You studied hard with passion, with desire to learn, you have come to this academy and I, I am sure you have reached the right place. Right place in the sense, to the best of knowledge, my knowledge, Chattinad Academy has a faculty which is exceptionally talented. The scholars here, our experts are leaders in their own respective domains and fields. I had an opportunity to interact with them early morning. They are going to be your guide. They are going to be your allies in your exploration. So reach out to them. Walk to them. Talk to them. Try to seek information about their research work. Share your, uh, your studies, your likes, your dislikes. And Start exploring and experimenting in newer areas. Choose events, choose projects, which may be totally new for you. It may sound scary also, but that is how the challenges come up. Your mentors, your, fa your faculty will help you, will guide you. They will also challenge you. And that's how the newer opportunities are going to come up for you. Okay, cutting short. I am fully aware that, uh, hope I am not too much loud. Is that okay? Uh, those who are sitting close to the speakers may, okay. I am aware that uh, you want to know about the pharmaceutical industry, the size and shape of the industry, the value of the industry, the options and opportunities available in the industry for you to make career. I'm aware 
that you want to know about Serum Institute of India, which is existing from last 50 plus years, but suddenly every common man started getting know, to know about Serum Institute because Serum Institute suddenly started making headlines in the last two years. So I'm aware you want to know about COVID, COVID vaccines. I'm also aware that you want to know about me and my journey in this industry. Fair enough. I'm going to address all your queries, all your questions, maybe during the question answer session or whatever the organizers have planned up or interactive session or question answer session. But for, at this moment of time, for next 10, 15 minutes, I request you all to keep all your anxiety, put your anxiety to rest. Keep your questions and queries aside. And donate your ears for next 10, 15 minutes. I want to make some sense so that, uh, so that it, it's worth coming here and talking to you all. Because if you want to know about me, I can read I can read out my CV and you'll find my CV shorter than me. That's for sure. And if you want to listen to my journey, I will finish it up in three to four minutes. But that reminds me, me and my son recently went to watch a movie called Bahubali. I am sure you might have also seen Bahubali. Yeah. After coming home, my son asked me. Papa, can we make such a movie? I said, no. He said, why? No, but it's not possible, it's difficult. Why I'm giving you this example? Because by watching a movie, you can't become a film director, you can't become a film producer, you can't become a, a film actor. So if I tell you my journey, it's not going to help you. Rather, I would like to tell you what has gone behind that journey. What has gone behind making that film will help you to understand, know it, inculcate it, practice it, and expertise it. Perhaps that will help you to become a film director or a filmmaker or a good actor. Am I right? No responses. Looks like the crowd is dull. Don't take it seriously. Rather, I would say, take it sincerely. Drop the word serious. Take it serious, sincerely. So I'll not tell me my journey. What I have done is, I have squeezed my 30 years of experience, filtered it, and crystallized in three simple points. Those three are very well known to you. Every next door girl or every next, day, or next door boy will tell you those three words. Very known. For that matter, you, you have a permanent assistant also. Each one of us has a permanent assistant. You know that? Your Google uncle. Nowadays, you can even give a command to Google, and Google uncle will answer you. So he can, Google uncle can answer. So those are three simple things. Knowing meaning is something else, and understanding it, inculcating in, is difficult, it's totally different. So I have tried to crystallize into three important points. I want, after the end of the session, or when you go back home, to remember those three things. Whether you want to be a good human being, a good entrepreneur, a good businessman, a good professional, whatever you want to become. These are the three important traits we call, personality traits, persona traits. You need to personify yourself, build in yourself. And this is the right time. It's the right time. Once the pot is made, you can't change it. You are still in the making, remember that. So, if I... If I don't share those three things, I will not be doing justice to my attendance to this program. Okay? So next 10-15 minutes, 
I'll not take much of time. I have some slides. I know you got bowed down with slides. You are, uh, you are fed up of slides because your last two years you might have studied online looking at these slides. But I'm helpless. That is the best way, method we follow. So a couple of slides I'll show. And I'm sure you will uh, try to understand. And if you don't understand, please raise your hand, ask me, stop me, interrupt me. No, not a problem. OK? Right. So here comes the word build. What it all means about. It's not working. Yeah. Well, these three points I was talking about. Character, capability, and commitment. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm disturbing you all, I think so. Huh? I'm extremely sorry. I don't know. I... Can we can we move these chairs this side so that you know? so these three traits I'm talking about character, capability, and commitment. Before I go to each of these traits, I have one slide for you. The most precious things in life for life are free of cost. It sounds very awkward, uncanny word. Sometimes some may feel that it is doesn't make sense. The most precious things for life are free of cost. What do you need for life? I need to breathe. I need air. Air is free of cost. I need water to live. Water is free of cost. I need source of energy. Food is the best source of energy. Food is free. I mean it. Not in this civilized society. But if you go back to the nature, the way we were made, nature had provided us source of energy. Nature has, had provided us food. In fact, human beings survived on herbs, plants, fruits, seeds. And when the homo sapiens realized that's how agriculture became the oldest profession on this earth. So all these precious things are free of cost. Don't you think that we all, you and me, should have a deep sense of gratitude for this? I think, I believe I should have a sense of gratitude. Because precious things are given free for me, are free for me. I have one more slide. Independence is a myth. Interdependence is a truth. Again, sounds uncanny. Recently celebrated uh, Amrit Mahotsav, 75 years of independence. And there were a lot of wishes, a lot of hashtags, messages going viral in social media. There was a campaign also, Ghar Ghar Jhenda. Fortunately, unfortunately, a large chunk of the population doesn't understand what independence means. Yes, we got independence from Britishers. We got freedom from slavery. But can I say today standing here I'm independent? I can't say. You all walk out from this hall. Will I be able to speak? Whom will I speak to? I'm not independent. I'm not independent. You know, independent as such. During the pandemic, we very well know, during the pandemic, during the lockdown, we realized the importance of a milkman, a vegetable vendor. We realized the importance of a medicine man. The pandemic has taught us a lot of things. We are interdependent. The very fact that the elements of this universe, of this nature, of this ecosystem are interconnected, such a way that we can't function Independently, we have to be interdependent. If you are independent, you can't, there was no need for you to come to this academy to take your further education because you need to depend on the gurus who are sitting here. With their knowledge and wisdom, they will part it. Right? So this is the second reason we all should feel gratitude, a deep sense of gratitude. There is one more slide. 
Ah, this is an absolute perfect, perfect example which fits your situation now. I want you to listen this attentively. Maybe it makes sense. This is the population. At this moment of time, if I take the average age of the student, 17 or 18, there are 2.7 crore youths in this country. There are 2.7 crore youths in this country of your age. Last three, four years, the average remains same. On the other hand, India has highest number of universities in the world. How many? 5,288 universities. The third thing which I am going to put up is shockingly surprising and surprisingly shocking. The number of graduates every year, 3.1 million males and 3.55 million females. If we total up, it becomes 6.6 .6 million. 6.6 .6 million makes means 66 lakhs. See this. There's a big question in front of all of us. 2.7 crore youths in any given single year of your age, and the graduating number is 66 lakhs. It means what? For some of the other reason, two crore students could not reach to the universities. Could not reach to the universities for some of the other reasons. Likewise, for some of the other reasons, you could reach universities and you belong to that 66 lakh students who graduate. This is third important reason for you to have a strong belief, strong sense of gratitude again. I don't want to snatch your credit. You have put in a lot of efforts. You have studied hard to reach here, no doubt about it. Full credit to you. However, you are fortunate enough because the rest are two crore every year are not fortunate. This is third reason for all of us to feel and be thankful. You are fortunate. Now, let me summarize this, why I was speaking so much on gratitude. Because the first trait which I was talking about in the first slide, I was talking about the trait character. And the foundation for building a good character is you need to cultivate an attitude of gratitude, without which this, this is not possible. So let me quickly give you my definition of character. Character can be divided into three, three sections. One is integrity, selflessness, and responsibility. Now you may be wondering, integrity. integrity is a word. You have heard the word integer in your school days? Integer. Integer is a complete number, not a fraction. So integrity is, that is the essence of integrity, complete. Not a fraction, consistent. It's not that in this matter today my integrity is high and next day in some other matter my integrity is low. No, it has to be consistent. Uh, when you step out in the corporate world, each company will have some core values, four or five selected core values, which are to be you know, honored, respected, imbibed, practiced in the company. 99% of the companies have one thing in common amongst their core values. They have a liberty to choose their own, but 99% companies have one thing in common, that is performance with integrity. It's very important. Why I'm telling you, three years ago, an MD and a CEO of a private bank had to step down. The individual had grown up from a grassroots level to a CEO and MD, putting in 30 years of service, but had to step down because of a question on integrity. In fact, it was a question on loyalty. It was a conflict of loyalty. And a very reputed bank and a reputed personality. So integrity is of highest value in the corporate world and it has to be inculcated even today. For example, being honest, it is very easy to be honest. 
it is easy to be honest as long as it doesn't affect me. The real challenge lies when I am supposed to be honest when it is going to affect me. I'll give you an example, quick example. Four students staying in a hostel. One of them has a birthday. They decide amongst themselves that uh, we will party today. Next day morning, they have an exam, but still they could not overcome the temptation and they go out, they enjoy the party whole night, they freak out and come late to the hostel. Next day morning, next day morning one of the intelligent person amongst the four constructs a story and says, so let's go to the dean and uh, tell the story. So they go to the dean's office. Before going, they soil and, you know, soil their clothes, dirty their clothes, and go and tell the dean that, uh, sir, we had a bad night yesterday. We went outside uh, for some shopping and uh, our car got punctured. So we had to push the car for three, four kilometers, very bad time, painful night. So we could not study whole night and uh, please give us an exemption from the test today. So the dean, not generous but judicious, gave relaxation, not an exemption, that after two days we will conduct your exam. So third day you come and appear for the test. Third day these four students go to the dean, they are made to sit in different rooms and they all, all four of them are given one question paper. The question paper had only two questions. One question, your name, and the marks allotted, only one. The second question was MCQ, multiple choice question. And the second question was, which tire of the wheel or tire of which wheel of your car got punctured? And it had 99 marks. See, the, de the dean, dean intelligent enough, judicious enough, understood the truth. But of course, uh, dean also empathetic. So to teach them a lesson through a subtle way, the question paper was designed. Why I'm giving you this example? Suddenly I jumped from a corporate uh, example of integrity to honesty in school, because I need to give you both examples, right? One of them could have gone to the dean and said that, honestly, this is what has happened. Either accept our poor performance in tomorrow's exam, today's exam, or give us another chance. That's it, enough. It will, it, it will give you much more advantage in the coming days. It will make a habit for you to be honest. So, this is what it is. This is how you build your character. Now, next to selflessness and responsibility, instead of elaborating on all those being humble, being courageous, you know all this, I'll give you quickly an example of a corporate world, a something different industry, which will you know, touch upon these values, these attributes of the traits. This example is something different, but you will... Yeah, on Jan 15, 2009, many of you uh, might have heard about this. I'm sure you were quite young. 2009 means you were how many years? Five years? No. Yeah, of course, five, six years. I'm talking about the freshers, sorry. I'm not <laughs> I'm talking about only the freshers who are 17, 18. So in, on January 15, 2009, an Airbus 320 took off from New York airport. Okay, the more, immediately by the time, immediately after takeoff, by the time the aircraft reached 1,000 feet, a flock of birds hit the engine and both the engines failed. In aviation, it's called the pilot communicates as a May Day. So he informed the ATC and he wanted to bring back the aircraft, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the engines failed, but he, so he, and the latitude was so low, 1,000 feet, so he could not take, the aircraft could not be taken to the nearby airport for an emergency landing. So he had no option either to crash in on the New York City or leave it to God. 
But he, he was brilliant, he was courageous. His decisiveness was very high. He took a decision and he decided to ditch in the Hudson River, Midtown Hudson River. In aviation, it is always said that emergency landing on emergency landing on ground is always preferred to water because the rescue is easier on land. So he ditched in the Hudson River. This is considered to be the most successful ditching of an aircraft in the aviation history. He also got honored and rewarded, awarded many stars by many associations and guilds of uh, pilots and all. That's, that's different, sorry. What I'm coming to the point is, there are 150 passengers and five crew members, not a single casualty. Fantastic. So when the aircraft ditched water, it started sinking slowly, and the, by the time the ships, the rescue ships and the rescue team came, uh, all, most of the passengers were pushed on the wings to be ready to you know, get onto the ships. What this cap, pilot Chelsley did, when the ship was sinking, he went inside the aircraft, took two rounds of 27 rows of the aircraft, 27 rows, front to back, back to front, just to check, reconfirm that not a single passenger is left behind. Remember, he was not in Air Force. He was not in Air Force, where the situation is do or die. He was a pilot of a commercial airlines. That is called as responsibility. This is a very extreme example, but you can, you can apply it in everyday life. You have a responsibility towards your parents who are sitting here. You have a responsibility towards your teachers, professors. Okay. So, you have a if, if somebody has fallen in love, you have a responsibility to maintain that relationship, to nurture and nourish it. Otherwise, your girlfriend will leave and go away. Isn't it? So you have certain responsibilities. So let me quickly, this is one most important trait of a personality which will be very useful. And when I come, go to the second and third, I promise you, you will not find the fourth one required to be successful in any aspects of life. Who are you going to be? And if you'll notice, I'm not asking what are you going to do, but who are you going to be? I'm asking you about how you plan to live your life every day. How are you going to respond when you don't get that job you had your heart set on? For all of you who are going to be teachers, what are you going to do if the students in your class next year just don't respond to your lessons? For all of you going into business, how will you react when your boss gives you a goal that feels way too high? See, these are the moments that define us. Not the day you get the promotion, not the day you win Teacher of the Year, but the times that force you to claw and scratch and fight just to get through the day. The moments when you get knocked down and you're wondering whether it's even worth it to get back up. See, those are the times when you've got to ask yourself, who am I gonna be? And I wanna be clear, this isn't just some vague platitude about building character. In recent years, we've actually been seeing a growing body of research that shows that skills like resilience and conscientiousness can be just as important to your success as your test scores or even your IQ. For instance, West Point cadets who scored high on things like grit and determination were more likely to complete basic training than those who ranked high on things like class rank, SAT scores, and physical fitness. So what we're seeing is that if you're willing to dig deep, if you're willing to pick yourself up when you fall, if you're willing to work and work until your weaknesses become your strengths, then you'll develop a set of skills that you can mold and apply to any situation you encounter, any job you might have, any crisis you might confront. But you've got to make that choice. Lights, please. Now moving to the second trait, capability. Uh, am I going? Uh? No, another five minutes. Capability. If we all did all the things we are capable of, we would literally astound ourselves because we don't know, we underestimate ourselves. 
what we have, unless and until we challenge ourselves, we test ourselves, we will not get to know. So there are six practice tools which are available always in all colleges. I will not uh, elaborate much on this. I'll, I'll crystallize and give you four messages on this. To build your capability, you need training. Offline training, online training, one-to-one -one training, group training, or collective training, right? Which will give you knowledge and skills so that you deliver your responsibility, your job very efficiently, effectively. That is provided by the academy. Right at the outset, I said it's a pool of talent. The faculty is highly, exceptionally talented. They will provide you all this. Mentorship, of course, they are available here. They will give you personalized guidance. Exposed to the industry expert, that has been the tradition of Chattinad Academy. The very example I'm standing in front of you, so they keep on calling the experts from the industry so that you are updated on recent trends, recent you know, happenings in the industry, so that you are aware you have to choose, where to choose, how to choose, and what to choose in which industry. And networking, this was not applicable during my school days, my college days, but networking now has turned out to be a, one of the most important capability. Commitment. Now you have commitment to your parents. I said just now, I said you have commitment to your boyfriend or a girlfriend. You need to stand by your commitment. Your commitment, best commitment is your self-commitment. Can you put the lights off? Because without commitment, nothing happens. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment or you're not going to make it. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. While they was golfing, I was studying. While they was shooting hoops, I was studying. While they was playing games and sitting up and eating and joking in the restaurant, I was studying. You can't get out of something, something that you're not willing to put into it. You have to put your everything, your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline, your tenacity. Nothing is going to jump out the fire if you don't throw something in there. It's not going to happen. But if we fight every day, one of them days is going to be my day. So this is the last slide. So I, now you can breathe. No more, I'm going to trouble you, OK? Uh, in the, somebody morning said that, love what you do or do what you love. I'll put it in a different way. Marry the girl you love. Or love the girl you marry. You don't have, God gives you only two options, OK? So I'm telling you why this, because the, the honorable advisor said that he wants more and more people to be entrepreneur. Go. Go by it. Chase your dreams. See, dream, dreams are nobody's intellectual property. Don't shy away from dreaming. The whole problem is everybody dreams. The problem is very few will follow the dream, and very less, very less, they chase the dreams. You should chase the dream the way you chase your girlfriend or a boyfriend. So start dreaming, explore yourself, don't stick to your studies alone. Try to be entrepreneurs. There are, I pick up a leaf from his book saying that because you know nowadays the startups coming up. I, I, I may be less aware of compared to what you are aware of as youngsters. Okay? So anything you want to know further from me, I am ready here. I am available till the time Dr. Kumar pulls me out of this hall and pushes me to the airport. I am available. So you can come to me and ask maybe either through a group or through or the individual can approach you. Okay? Thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have truly exhibited why Guru is placed above God. I'm sure your words and experiences will indeed en enrich our knowledge. Thank you once again. 
May I kindly request our honorable dignitaries to come on to the dais. It is indeed a wonderful privilege to announce that Chetinath Academy of Research and Education is offering various scholarships for students excelling in their academics. Once again, may I request our chief guest, Mr. Mallinath Ji, to present the Srimati Geeta Muttaya Outstanding Merit Scholarships to our students from the 2022 to 2023 batch. Under this scholarship, the students are eligible for a 100% fee waiver. I would like to call upon the students who are awarded this prestigious scholarship First, we have Ms. Bhuvaneshwari S. Next, we have Ms. S.M.A. Muhammad Sabreen. Next, we have Ms. N. Tamilarasi. Next, we have Mr. T. Manigandan. Ms. Darshini A. Thank you, sir. Our hearty congratulations to all the students receiving the scholarships. Chetinad Academy of Research and Education is the hub of both medicine as well as research. We have students belonging to various basic, technical, and professional courses. Our students are very eager to know certain aspects of Serum Institute of India over vaccine production. On behalf of all of our students, I would like to request the chief guest to kindly share his views regarding the following queries. The first question is from Ms. Celsia, pursuing her bachelor's in physiotherapy. Good morning, sir. We are very happy to have you here. Sir, I'm curious, was it your dream to work at the Serum Institute of India, the world's largest manufacturer of vaccines? How did it happen, sir? Could you tell us? You are taking me back to my dreams now. Uh, see, by qualification, I'm a microbiologist. And uh, I started as a microbiologist in the lab. Within two, three months, I realized that I'm, na I'm not made for it. So again, I told you that time a wise man told me, marry the girl you love or love the girl you marry. <laughs> so I decided, uh, no, I'll go behind my love. So I moved out from an you know, office job. I wanted something thrilling, challenging every day. Uh, because I always used to have that adrenaline rush in me. Okay. 
coming from a very humble background, uh, whenever somebody asked me, what do you want to achieve? I used to say, I want to make my parents happy. This, they used to feel something un awkward, uncanny, but that is what I wanted to do. So I wanted to have the best of the luxuries for my family. I wanted to have a happy family. I could, I could think of only this through if I progress in the job, in the profession, faster than the others. So I wanted to choose a career path which can give me quick, quick progression, quick elevations, faster. So then, see, you see, so, uh, this gives me an opportunity to address the pharma people also here, pharma students sitting here. Farm, those, who are, those, those who are doing pharmacy, you have multiple options. Right from government job like FDA, you can become a drug inspector also. You can work into clinical trials, you can work in manufacturing, you can work in uh, you know, drug development. You can become a pharmacist also, open a retail or a, you can become a businessman as a wholesaler also. You can go up to you know, being a manufacturing giant. So you have multiple options. There is one option in this, one more option, which is the toughest one. That is pharmaceutical sales and marketing. It's very tough. 24 hours, there is no job time. You, are, you, are, you need to be on your toes. You will have challenges every day. But let me tell you, the most rewarding job is this job. Most rewarding. So that's how I chose this. And I started as a, right at the grassroots level as a salesperson. Moved step by step every two, three years, two, three years. Went on getting promoted. Of course, promotions don't happen in private sector. Uh, it's one good thing is that give by one hand, take by another hand. That's the philosophy. So more and more you contribute to the organization. The organization keeps rewarding and awarding you. That is a fact. That is a fact of the corporate world. So I always dreamt because I'm a microbiologist. So I was always having that uh, affinity towards microbes, microorganisms. So that is how I chose this pharmaceutical and then uh, deeper into vaccines. And last 30 years I had been associated with vaccines. Uh, sorry, 20 years associated with vaccines development. So. I, it, it, you know, I kept on adding to the organization, organization in return, in reciprocation, added to me. So my journey started in 1996 with a multinational company, as, its name is GlaxoSmithKline, the British multinational. I worked for 22 years. When I did well in sales, I started challenging myself to why not to change the function. So I went into marketing. For two, three years, again I challenged myself. I thought, why not to try medical and marketing compliance? So I worked in medical and marketing compliance. For some time, I challenged myself and thought, why not to get into training and you know, recruitment? I did that. Then I thought that let me you know, manage a business unit of the entire country. So I moved to a company called as Wokhard as a, as a national head. Then I thought, now the one more thing is left is strategy and business development for future business of the company. So companies usually have two years plan, five years plan, 10 years plan down the line. So one fine day I got an opportunity, as you rightly said, to work for a company. Uh, a company every citizen should be you know, feeling proud of, Serum Institute of India. It's a dream company, no doubt about it, and I am fortunate to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I'm also curious to know about your professional journey from GSK to Wakhar to Serum Institute of India. Could you share it with us, sir? OK. In 20 years of time, in 20 years period, can you, how many of you will be ready to get relocated 13 times in different parts of the country. 13 transfers, none of them were punishment transfer, all of them were elevation and promotion transfers. Right? I will 
tell you two, three, <coughs> two, three things which will narrate the entire journey. You all are smart enough to interpret and extract the meaning out of it. One, I said, I changed 13 districts in 20, 13, across the country, 13 headquarters in 20 years, 20 houses, because in some of these uh, headquarters uh, cities, my wife used to force me to change the house. This is not good, we'll go for another one. So we were like vagabond, we were like nomadic tribes. You know, nomadic tribes, they do their play in one city, collect money, make their li livelihood and move to the second town. Sales and marketing jobs are very tough, this kind of stuff. So this is one. Second thing is, by the time my daughter reached 10th standard, she had learned in five states. Five different languages. Five different languages. So every time she used to come to me and cry, Papa, I'm, I'm losing my friends. You are again moving me to some other town. Then I kept on telling her, Beta, I am sorry for the, because the perils of my transfer are, you know, affecting you. You are suffering the perils of my transfer, but however, we can't help. We are helpless. If I have to take care of your education, I need to keep myself rolling. So, so that is the second example. What might have gone in my journey? That's the second example. Third example is, when I was 45, I, I, I don't mind revealing my age now when I'm saying 45. <laughs> so some five, six years ago, I had an opportunity to attend a marriage of my maternal uncle's daughter. And there were a lot of relatives around and my mother suddenly introduced me as, he's my second son. My relatives were shocked. When was he born? It means what? The day I left home in 1995-96, I sacrificed all the functions, festivals, relatives, the ceremonies, the celebrations, everything. Because if I'm based out of Chandigarh and my, fam my parents are in Maharashtra, coming from Chandigarh would have cost me a half a month's salary those days. And how, how, how frequently I can come? So for tw these 25 30 years, initially 22, 23 years, the journey was so hard. And then, you know what? All these days, all these years, I kept putting efforts with a common, well, one single objective. Like that Arjuna said, no, bird's eye. And my whole goal was to reach the corporate office, head office. One or the other day, I want to reach the head office because only then I'll get settled. So in 2014, finally, I reached head office of GlaxoSmithKline in Mumbai. So there my travel ended. In the sense, the transfers, the move, movements ended, and my daughter and son had a comfortable, happy, okay. So I, I think these examples are enough for you to understand what might have gone behind, you know? Uh, if I say that I don't have a story of, you know, of many, many stories you listen that I studied under the street lamp, no, I. I don't have that kind of story. Yes, I studied all throughout EBC, economically backward class. And that also I'll define in those days, it was uh, the family is earning not more than 4,800 rupees in a year, 400 rupees per month. So the student used to become eligible for economically backward class. So I all throughout till my graduation, I studied under economically backward class. You are fortunate enough. They are so generous, giving some scholarship, 100%, 70%, I was just, uh, it was, it touched me. Okay. So, I don't have that story, but yes, I never look back. One more difference which helped me is, people stumble upon challenges by default. I brace the challenges by design. I used to go to the management and ask, this is a problematic part of the business, I want you to assign this to me. If I, I knew that if I, succeed, if I fail, I'll overcome the fear of failure. If I succeed, I'll be Sikandar. So I used to go approach the management and ask, give this assignment to me. People used to go away from such challenging jobs, assignments, but I used to go voluntarily and ask them. That helped me because 90% of the times I succeeded and that's how I got awarded and rewarded. 
I hope uh, journey is clear enough. Nothing more to be told beyond this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That sounds like a truly exhilarating journey. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Ms. Kirti, pursuing her master's in medical biotechnology. Good morning, sir. As Indians, it was a very proud moment for us to witness the launch of Covishield vaccine in our own country within such a short span of time. I'm eager to know how your team faced all the difficulties in order to release the Covishield vaccine into the market. You want to know the challenges? Yes. My God, you are putting a lot of challenges to me now. <laughs> See, we produced 130 crore doses. These doses are packed in a vial, a bulb, you understand vial, no, a bulb, which holds 10 doses. So just imagine for 130 crores, you required 13 crore vials. Who will give us in that pandemic? Lockdown, 13 crore vials. That's the first challenge. Second, we were supposed to do the clinical trials in India. During pandemic, to get the candidates to do the clinical trials, so the, the faculty of Chettinad will understand the, the challenges in uh, uh, doing the clinical trials. Getting the candidates in the shortest time, that was the second challenge. Third challenge was the getting the regulatory approvals, but the government was so cooperative, they have put it on fast track. What we did, which is, which is, which is absolutely out of the way is, on one hand, we conducted the clinical trials. On the other hand, we started the manufacturing production. Uh, with the great respect to the Honorable uh, Dr. C.S. Punawala and Dr. Uh, A.C. Punawala, who are by heart, by core, they are philanthropists, they put their money to risk. It was a big bet, putting 1,500 crores manufacturing the vaccine well before it is it succeeds in the clinical trial so good thing is that by the time the, the vaccine succeeded in the clinical trials and we got the approval already 5 crore doses were ready and the and the and the only only uh, you know mission in the mind of the uh, honorable punawalas was the vaccine should be available on, on right on day 1 if it succeeds it should be available for the citizens of the country for almost seven, eight months, we did not export a single vial to any country. Everything was prioritized for India. And come January, we started the supplies under the guidance of Ministry of Health. Initially, government said that 75% they will take from us and reallocate to the states, and 25% to the uh, hospitals, private hospitals. Now, the drug was you know, licensed as an emergency drug. So we cannot supply it to the retail pharmacies. We cannot use the wholesalers and the super distributors. So the established supply channels which the pharma companies have, you can sit down, you can sit down. No, you can sit down. Thank you, so the established supply chains uh, pharma companies have were not of use for us because the drug was not supposed to go through that channel, primarily because it was an emergency drug. So it was to be supplied directly to the hospitals. So generating the, the you know IT, IT doesn't accept the billing of a, uh, or invoicing a particular customer unless until we create a customer code for the customer. So again, it was a hell of work. Then there are around 1,500 hospitals to be supplied. Couriers were not available, not functioning to the optimum. It is a vaccine. The temperatures need to be maintained 2 to 8 degrees centigrade, very sensitive. It is a cold chain product, hence it needs to be airlifted. So airlines, half of the airlines were not operational. Many uh, air, uh, you know, flights were getting cancelled because of the less occupancy. So airlines could not afford to take off from that, uh, uh, you know, origin airport to the destination airport because of the occupancy. So we used to fail in, in such cases to supply to those cities and the supplies is to get delayed by a day or two. These were the, some of the challenges, but we, the only answer I can say is that every day we had nothing but challenges and every day we had only one thing in mind, as a team we will work and we will solve it. So be it uh, production, be it uh, logistics, be it supply chain, uh, be it uh, IT department, be it marketing, 
be it courier or we, uh, we had association we have associations with the courier agencies for our last eight, 10 years so they also came to our rescue so as a teamwork in support from with the excellent support from the uh, hospitals like chatinad also because they were also equally cooperative because many times we supplied on sundays called up the hospital saying that please accept it is sunday but this is what it is they also opened up on sunday some of the hospitals which were not operating they opened up their purchase department and accepted so it's about the teamwork entire country was having a single object to vaccinate 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 thank you thank you sir sir uh, i have one more question sir no before that in fact we all should give a um, uh, we should applaud the covid shield because we also received 2500 vials whenever we ask immediately it is being supplied and we could able to utilize imagine the whole country have been supplied by serum institute and the whole country is so grateful to serum institute for giving so much kind of things let us give a big applause for our business expert malinath thank you sir Uh, i have one more question sir uh, how did serum institute of india prioritize uh, the distribution to meet all the global demands sir india was the first priority i think enough that's enough thank you so much sir yeah, thank you thank you sir the next question is from ms meenakshi pursuing her bachelor's in pharmacy good morning sir so is vaccination safe do we need to get vaccinated against all the diseases if a disease is preventable you should prevent simple you 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 yourself the, the, the uh, pharmacy the medical you know paramedical the life sciences you you only teach and preach us saying that prevention is better than cure so applying that philosophy if i say if a disease is preventable please prevent it right polio eradication is the best example look at the smallpox you don't know smallpox is the only pre disease pre uh, vaccine preventable disease which got eradicated all credit to vaccine smallpox polio there are many examples so vaccines are safe no doubt because you should know the first trial which is done for any vaccine candidate vaccine is the safety profile am i sir right sir yeah the safety profile is touched first is tested a vaccine need not be beneficial fine but it should not be harmful in first place safety is important because vaccines are given to a healthy individual healthy individual comes to you and we give vaccine tt is the best tt is the best TT example ha uh, look at tt <laughs> so vaccines will keep on increasing no doubt about it and it is always good because you should, we don't understand as as see um, we are not having access to access to that uh, you know for example 5 lakh children die every year under the age of 5 because of pneumonia nam same same number because of diarrhea rotaviral diarrhea it's alarming and fortunately companies have developed uh, scientists have developed vaccines against these two now there is cervical cancer vaccine which is coming up which is already have been announced by the government of india huge number of females in this country die because of cervical cancer it's very uh, you don't, you can't even uh, you know guess what could be the feelings they go through when they have cancer so if something comes up which can prevent cancer nothing like that this is the second cancer preventing vaccine the first one was hepatitis b which we all of us have taken for liver cirrhosis and this is the second vaccine which is coming up so you should be happy more and more vaccines should come however the development is happening the researchers are working in combination of vaccines so that your pricks are reduced otherwise the the child will feel that as if born to take vaccines only more than that gripe water okay thank you
Thank you, sir. Sir, I would also like to know, why do children get more vaccines now than they did when I was young? You were lucky, no? <laughs> OK, and we were more lucky than you because we, we got only one or two. Those days, though, vaccines were not available. And now vaccines are available. When I was born, even hepatitis B was not available. BCG, TT, that's it. Oil level was not available. Now slowly there are there are vaccines for uh, DPT, TT. There are for pneumonia, for rotaviral diarrhea. You have now for many of the respiratory uh, diseases we have vaccines. So it is that is the reason now the children who are born they are lucky enough. Secondly, the growing economy they are, they are lucky because they are born in uh, born in rich families. Second and many are the nuclear families. One child, two children. So th simple answer again back, going back to your earlier question, if a disease is preventable, give it. So then the question comes, is it affordable? If it is affordable, if you can afford, go and take into private. If government makes a provision, fantastic. Nothing like that. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Mr. Gokulavasan, pursuing his bachelor's in pharmacy. Good morning, sir. I would morning. like to know what are the newer non-COVID vaccine that are at pipeline by Serum Institute India. We are com we are we are coming with the hexavalent vaccine, which combines five vaccines in one shot. We have recently announced a cervical cancer vaccine, which a much affordable price. You might have read in the newspaper also. It's a cervical cancer vaccine. We are working on uh, uh, dengue vaccine. We are working on dengue monoclonal antibodies. Uh, we are working on another Tdap vaccine, which is a booster vaccine at the age of uh, 8 to 10. So at least four or five vaccines. We have, you might have read in the newspaper also, monkeypox is coming up. So we, the work has started on monkeypox also, yellow fever also, Japanese encephalitis also. Okay, More and more disease, if they are vaccine preventable, uh, we we think we have a plenty of job. We have plenty of things on our plate. So we should, our scientists should work. Right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Ms. K. Niveta, pursuing her bachelor's in physiotherapy. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, can you please tell us about the internships and career opportunities at Serum Institute of India? And what skill set should one possess to be a part of it? Take your degree and plus these three traits of your personality. Character, capability, commitment. Go to any company, these are the three things required. One. Career opportunities, plenty. I should tell you, Indian pharmaceutical company, the size of Indian pharmaceutical company is 1,90,000 crores annually. 1,9,000. So it's 2 lakh, right? 2 lakh crores. This is private market. Add 22,000 crores, which is supplied to the government, semi-government, state governments, everything that, that comes under government. Indian pharmaceutical industry is the third largest in the world by volumes and 13 by value. Now you may be wondering, third by volume means units. Why 13th? Because of, you know, the dollar and rupee difference, the pounds and rupee difference, the euro and rupee difference. Another reason, we are more into generics. Generics are less priced. We are the largest exporter of generic. We contribute 20% of the global exports generics. We, as Honorable Dean has said, 60% of the vaccines to the world are supplied by the, by the country. And 20% of antiretroviral viral drugs, you know, that which are useful to combat AIDS, 80% are supplied by Indian companies to the global market. So this, look at the size of the pharma. It's mammoth. And... Uh, Two, prof two professions or two business entities will be the last to die in this world. One is food 
second is medicine right so you are in the right place you have chosen the right thing as far as internship career opportunities you decide i told you you can become if you if you, you need to understand what you are good at what you like uh, you want to be a um, pharmacist you want to be into clinical trials you want to be into manufacturing you want to be an expert in uh, clinical data research all these options are available in this industry and each company has all these functions each company has all these functions you need to choose it and you can accordingly make the career but they believe me there are 1500 manufacturing units in this country big enough and there are almost 3000 pharma companies big enough so you you have chosen the right thing scope is tremendous but it is left to you ultimately what you want to make it how you want to make it and where you want to make it right thank you thank you sir thank you sir the next question is from miss jency pursuing her masters in medical biotechnology good morning sir being an entrepreneur is always a dream for many according to you who can be an entrepreneur you can be <laughs> okay are you an innovator sometimes very good if you are an innovator if you are a dreamer innovator doesn't mean you need to invent something new if you are an ideator even an idea also if you are an ideator if you are a dreamer if you are able to sell your ideas to others if you have patience suppose if you kick start your idea as a startup and expect a break even in 2 years time however there are chances it may go up to 4 years so do you have patience to reach that break even and fourth do you have investments forget if you don't have huge chunk of money is available with the cap venture capitals they are ready to invest you might have seen that uh, serial uh, shark tank on tv shark tank is a, is a serial on uh, indian television where the investors sit and if you go and present your idea they invest in your startup so money is also available plenty so if you if you are an ideator if you are a dreamer to chase your that idea if you are having that patience to sustain, tolerate, till you succeed, and if you are able to sell that. Because every business you think of is already existing. Every business you think of is already existing. So that is the reason I say you need to be an ideator. See, for example, uh, Uber is the world's largest, uh, uh, what you call, taxi agency without having a single taxi. They don't have a single taxi single car they don't own. Oyo till recent, two years ago, largest chain of hotels without owning a hotel. Right? Flipkart, it was started by two professionals, they left their job, IT job and started the uh, Flipkart. You know where it is now. Right? So, there is, there is, I don't think there is any reason why one should not be an entrepreneur. The only thing is that the, those four, three, four things you should have in mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for taking time to patiently answer all our questions. Your answers indeed gave us a different outlook than we had yesterday. And I'm sure my friends must have felt the same. As we are nearing the end of the celebration and with the same enthusiasm, I would like to request Dr. P. Sandal, Dean, Chetanath School of Physiotherapy, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good noon and warm greetings to all of the young buddies and future healthcare professionals. This is the remarkable day for you all, first day of your college life, with many dreams of butterflies in your mind. And I hope through the inaugural function, you are blessed with the wordings of dignitaries along with the good ambience, which is the speciality of care. On this occasion, first, I would like to thank 
the almighty without his supreme power this inaugural function won't be a successful one i would like also extend my sincere thanks to our managing trustee chettinad academy of research and education dr shri m a m r mutayya and our honorable chancellor shrimadi geeta mutayya our honorable vice chancellor professor dr shanta ravi shankar our adviser dr professor t balasubramanian care our respectable registrar shrimadi jayendra saraswati care and our coe shrimadi dr s nirupa for their continuous support throughout this occasion and i will also like to thank our chief guest you are so humble sir simple humanity very inspir- you have given a very inspirational talk which is a motivating for the students and also to us as a teacher we want to bow you sir for being here and gracing this occasion thank you so much sir i would also thank dr kumar ebinai sir principal faculty of allied health science dr k lakshmi dean chettinad school of pharmaceutical science and dr pankaj kumar dean chettinad school of occupational therapy and all the faculty team for their coordinated work i would like to thank all the dean principal of other constituent colleges of care vice principal dr r arun kumar chri our academic director dr sridhar our deputy registrar dr meenana kumar and hods of various departments of chri for their continuous support and their presence i would like to thank the student volunteers in this occasion who have supported along with the faculty committees members on this occasion and also my special thanks to our it head infra head finance head security head admin head and their team for their timely help in arrangement for all the facilities i extend my thanks to the staff of our dean office academic and auditory staff for arranging the av aids and other facilities food caterers and non teaching faculties for their immense contribution for this function finally i would like to thank all the new batch students and their parents who have gathered here and made the function a grand and successful one once again thank you all thank you thank you sir i know you were uh, very anxious very desperate to know about the journey of covishield also though i try to brief in short i brought a book which is the shield covishield okay uh, i just i brought a i brought this three four copies with a purpose in mind that uh, let these be in your library with your respective dean so that whenever you want you can always go and have a reference look at it let it be as a uh, you know a part of your uh, library in the thank you so i want to i i request the dean uh, the advisor to hand over one copy to each one of them uh, each one you give it to our vice chancellor sir
Thank you, sir, for generously contributing a piece of your knowledge to our college. Um, we now request the gathering to rise for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Ravida, Uttara, Vanga, Vindhya, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchal, Jaladhita, Ranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashish, Mange, Gahe Tava Jaya Gagha Jana Gana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you, everyone. I request the parents to please occupy the front seats. Parents, Munadi on the Roka like vacant places. Seats, Irkana, Munadi on the Kandak language. Irkra space learning adjustment, you can't.
pharmacy, physiotherapy and allied health sciences. We used to explain the same things, but still we need to uh, emphasize on those uh, particular aspects for the teachers as uh, sorry, for the students as well as the The individuals to become responsible and empathetic global citizen who can contribute to a sustainable future, who can save the life in the society. Uh, as well as the mission statement goes like enable the students to imbibe the values, that is very, very important. Cultivate a desire for lifelong learning, which is also important in the medical field, and maximize their potential through establishing a network of activities whatever the network is available right now with the current scenario and to contribute to the social, economic, economical as well as national development. That is the mission statement of the institute. And we do have auditoriums, lecture halls, theatres, lecture theatres and smart classes and other classrooms for all our students. And also we have equipped, well equipped uh, laboratory, skills lab in the campus and we do have basic research facilities for all kind of research activities, whatever we are doing. And we have a specific dedicated system for the students, which is called learning management system, and uh, completely dedicated AC examination halls. We do have recreation playgrounds, indoor and outdoor within the campus. We do have an excellent transport facility within Chennai. And if, most of you might have seen the food court, and also the students are in front of the uh, turnstile ga gates. Then we do have banking facility, Axis Bank, and uh, an ATM uh, of HDFC Bank, which provides all kind of hospitality and health care within the campus. So why we conduct this session? So who is responsible? And, and the responsibility lies on whom? Whether the institute or college, because we have administration, we have higher officials, and every eyes are watching. You know, there are a lot of cameras as well as people who are watching us 24 by 7 within the campus. Whether these people are responsible or we do have class or course in charges, mentors and teachers, and apart from that, parents and students. Who are responsible? Everybody is responsible. It's a teamwork, you know. Whatever you send, you, ch you have chosen the college to be best for your uh, wards. They are here. We are here to teach them or nurture them or promote them. And the parent has to take care of the students, whether they are attending properly or something like that. Then the student also has a lot of responsibility in fulfill fulfilling the dream of the parents as for the teacher. And they do have accountability, right? Whatever you spend, as a fees or something like that, and then they have, they do have accountability. So everybody is responsible as an administration, as a dean or principal or class in charge, mentor or teacher, the parent as well as the student. That is why we conduct this session with all the four pillars of your ward's life. So coming to the rules and regulation, 
So you all know the college works from 8.30 to 4. Every second and fourth Saturdays are holidays. All other uh, Saturdays are working. So we do have restricted holidays. Whatever the government holidays, we do have restricted holidays just like a corporate institute. So students should wear clean, neatly ironed uniforms. That is very, very important because we have dress code and the uniform will be distributed to everyone shortly whenever it is available. And you have to look like a professional. You are not a student anymore. You have come to the college as a student, but we will make you as a professional from day one onwards. So male students must come with clean shaven face and their shirt should be tucked in most of the time. Female students should tie up their hair again with a proper uniform. Slippers, sports shoes and sandals are not permitted because you need to have a formal shoe or a shoe which is available or you can get it from a, a branded shoe or something like that which is compulsory and everyday people used to watch whenever you enter the college campus. All the students must wear their identity cards all the time because you know the access is completely through biometric with fingerprint punching. So you must bring your identity card every day. We will provide you a temporary identity card today. Probably once the registration process is over, you will get a temp uh, permanent identity card with your registration number. Okay. So you must wear uh, the identity card whenever you have going to take the administrative, sorry, academic activity. And parents should also keep your eye on every ward, whether they are in the hostel or they are day scholars. You need to check them properly. It is a responsibility of the parent, apart from the student, to check whether they are following these things every day. So you might have um, signed some declaration forms with regard to uh, discipline as well as anti-ragging. So I'll skip a few slides here. So ragging, I never had any kind of such uh, activity within the campus. Uh, as long as you know, I am here for the last 11 years. I never faced any kind of this activity. It's an offense, we all know, for which you have also signed a declaration form whenever you do the admi admission process. Similarly, this point I have to mention again, usage of mobile phones. It is not allowed to take the mobile phone inside the college block. There is a security desk in which you have to give the mobile phone and they will issue a token. Whenever you leave the college in the evening, you have to give the token and then get the phone back from the security personnel. So that is very, very important. If you have found or caught with a mobile phone in the college block, then you will be punished, like, you know, the punishment suspension of two weeks from the college. There may be some fine also. And most of the time, the phone will be confiscated. confiscated. That means, it will not be given you back until you finish your course. Okay, the, you can request with your parents so that they will give you the SIM card. So the, again, this one you have uh, signed whenever you do the admis uh, admission process. You have to go through those files whenever you sign, the parent as well as the student. So any damage or anything caused uh, within the campus, apparatus, furniture or other articles, because of negligence or unwanted activity, carelessness, wantonness, then it will be seriously viewed and then fine will be collected from the student and also we will initiate a disciplinary action uh, whenever uh, they find doing something like that. I will also like to mention the entry, uh, tailgating. So tailgating means if any one candidate punch and two will pass through the gate, the turn styles. So the tailgating uh, is also not allowed. You, you know, you have a closed circuit camera if, uh, near every turnstile gate. So it will take a photograph and then it will give you whenever you do any kind of tailgating. So it will be fined. Okay, just keep that, on, uh, keep that in mind. It's a, also, uh, we would like to remind every time, the fine is huge. So you should not do that if anybody forget to bring their card, they can still ask the security personnel to give a visitor card and then they can enter. They should not enter along with a friend or somebody else who will give access into the campus. So it will be seriously viewed and fine. 
Students should have at least minimum of 80 percent attendance. That is mandatory. Okay, because everything is biometric here. Our computerized, our electronic device will take care of your attendance and all the other things. For example, we may have a MyCamu software soon in which every individual student's details or information will be uh, saved from day one till they finish the degree. So it will be computed, accumulated semester-wise, and then it will automatically will not allow you to pay the exam fees so that you may not pay the fee, so ultimately the hall ticket may not be generated. So internal test we have, uh, each uh, school has a different uh, set of uh, internal examinations that is called continuous assessment test. It is must, you need to take care of them carefully because internal component also have some kind of value or credit whenever we compute the overall marks and percentage and also credit. And most of the courses are coming under semester pa pattern as well as we have choice based credit system where the student has a choice to choose the syllabus uh, or uh, sorry papers in some of the elective uh, subjects. And parents can also check with the respective class in charges about their performance and other things. Every class have a in charge so that you will get a number of the class in charge and you can, you can also call them. These numbers will be provided when they join the uh, uh, individual uh, colleges probably after a week or so. So we have a lot of awards for academic excellence and proficiency. For example, there is a Raja Mute Award that is gold medal for academic proficiency for those who secured highest mark in their degree programs. This is called gold medal in other term. We have academic proficiency award. Similarly, you might have uh, heard about a lot of other scholarships. You, you can also see in our websites, like uh, the lot of merit, uh, outstanding scholarship, what we had in the morning function, you know, there is a uh, Gita Mute outstanding merit scholarship for those students who have secured more than 90 percent. That's a complete waiver of tuition fees. That is 100 percent waiver of fees. So <coughs> every school has different kind of scholarship which every student can avail. The, uh, the fee structure itself has been um, structured in a way that every student will have those scholarship. And for AHS, the specialty allotment is through counseling. We have explained already based on your first year performance. We'll put a merit list, call, call you for the counseling after the publication of first year results. So you'll choose the specialties only in the second year. And you need to go through the website for various committees. We have a lot of committees for welfare of students as well as the faculty members. Uh, each committee has a convener or member. You need to go through the uh, website. And also, when you go through the college uh, campus or college blog, you will have the boards contain a lot of committee members' name, convener's name, and member's name in case of anti-ragging in case of uh, sex, uh, sexual harassment, harassment for women, and then grievance redressal. We have cells and committees for which we have a lot of people to uh, solve those problems. You can also enter those complaints online on our website. Okay. That's why I'm telling you to go through the website. So there are a lot of committees you can go through. There are southern other activities. For example, good uh, national service scheme a cell which, you, which will take you for various um, activities around uh, and other places. We have a very good uh, sports uh, grounds, indoor and outdoor uh, auditoriums where there are a lot of sports activity happen every time. Every week we will have some kind of events or competition happening. This comes under uh, the scheme called Fit India movement. So we do have an alumni association. Alumni are a major part of every college. So once you pass through or get through the degree, you will become an alumni of the college. So you need to contribute in terms of various aspects like uh, in terms of funding, in terms of uh, helping your juniors uh, with the posting and other things. So alumni association is there, which is active, and then you need to contribute that uh, to that particular alumni association when you pass through this particular course or coursework or whatever program. And we do have lot of cultural programs as well as 
uh, most of the time we used to have movies on every Thursday in the same auditorium. So the recent movies which is uh, released in that particular month will be screened in this particular auditorium. There are other activities like we had Vonam celebration yesterday. If you go through the social media like Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook group, Facebook, YouTube, if you type Chetinada Academy Research and Education, there are a lot of videos on everyday activity. Every day we have a lot of activities. So you can follow it through the social media by becoming or subscribing to that particular uh, uh, link. And um, library again, we have central library as well as every individu individual schools has their own department libraries. So the li library working hours are there in website also, but still it will work from 8 to 10 p.m. in the uh, night. On Sundays and declared holidays, 9 to 4 p.m., public and institution declared holidays, it will be closed. Okay, the students are encouraged to utilize those facilities and library, there are some restrictions you need to follow. And it will be closely monitored again. Punch in, punch out system is followed. Um, you can also use the department library on any working day. There will be an in charge for every department library and you can take books and then read and then uh, replace it. You know, there's a time limit for a book uh, which is borrowed from the library. And refreshment, chatting, cell phones are strictly, strictly prohibited. And then you have to register your name whenever you enter and come out of the uh, library.